Good morning everyone and welcome back to Honeybee Farmstead. I'm Mel and I'm Grace and we are about to start our morning chores super early because we have football this morning in town and we need to get this cow milked. We have a problem. We have no power. So uh, these are just things we have to learn to deal with on a farmstead. Today I have to hand milk. I've gone in and I've disinfected and cleaned the bucket. I've got some cleaning solution just like normal uh, to clean her udder. I have thoroughly washed and scrubbed my nails so that I'm super clean, ready to collect the milk for the day. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different, so I thought we'd uh, we'd show you this part. Now, the problem I'm going to have with this is that Deirdre has got not very long teeth. She's not like the old school uh, milking cows will have really long teats and you can hand milk really easy. Unfortunately, the genetics of those sorts of cows are being bred out of them because they're being bred to have shorter teats to accept a milking machine in a dairy. So that is, I think, a really unfortunate thing. Um, and I'm, I'm looking to probably try and breed my Jersey lines a little bit differently. If I get one with really good udder and teats, I will be keeping that line going. Well, that's the plan anyway. It doesn't always go to plan, so that's what we're aiming for. I'm going to call the girls in now and get them all eating their breakfast, and then I'll I'll start hand milking. I hope I don't make a total mess. Um, I haven't hand milked Deirdre before because I have hand milked a cow before. Don't get me wrong. I grew up doing it. Um, on Old Goldie, we had an old jersey called Goldie uh, when I was a kid, but we haven't milked Deirdre this way because like I said her teats are tiny uh, and it was, I already had a milking machine so it was just easier so wish me luck guys and uh yeah I need it Grace is gonna help me all right same process as far as keeping her teats nice make sure we get our moisturizer on or that she's got a full udder today I wonder if I'll get more not having the machine or less. Who knows? Let's see. Let's see. All right, I think I'm ready. Her udder feels very full and ready to go. It's quite warm, actually. Really? I hope it doesn't. Okay, that doesn't mean something. Probably it's warm milk. Okay. Now, she doesn't normally step, so I'm pretty sure I can put my clean bucket on the ground. I'm just going to trial it first. I'm going to. That, that, that can't happen. I'm going to put this tail in here mm -hmm. so she can't flop it in the milk. Mom. Good girl. There's only a little bit of scratches on there. Stand up. Yep. Yeah. Excuse me, darling. What's that, Mum? What, sweet? What's that thing on yeah. top? That is estrogen. Oh, to see it if she's in heat. Short her pizza. My hand can't really see how I'm doing my fingers. Yeah. Starting from the top and squeezing down. We don't actually strip like that. I feel like that's actually not good for the teeth. But you could do it that way on on her because her teeth aren't big enough. But it's long term. I don't think that's good for them. And I was once told that isn't good for them. So. You're doing the back ones now. Oh god, it's tough. And that's a lot of milk though. I wonder if I could put the tub on the ground and she won't kick it. <laughs> she probably won't. Oh, damn you, Western Power. It is bad weather today, so it's possible someone's come 
to a bit of grief. I hope not. We, get it. we pray that no one has. Because that would be awful. But it's usually what your mind goes to when on days like today where it's raining and horrible. Tiny teats does not make for easy milking. No, but big teats do. Well, I'm almost finished but because this is new to her as well with me hand feeding her Grace is going to give her some of her favorite treat show us carrot. she loves carrot they share a, they share a good crunchy carrot together these two don't you Gracie mm -hmm. so good oh, wait. that working Why does that um, Miss Valley have a chain on her again? And we're done. RSI in my hand. Oh, she did really well. Um, she actually was beautifully, mm. beautifully behaved. I think she quite liked the quiet of no loud milking machine. Mm. And I would suggest that that's probably about three or four three, three and a half litres, mm. but um, we'll go inside, strain it off, clean everything up, and um, I'll get back to you and, and I'll let you know when we get on with, we've got to go to footy and all those sorts of things, so we'll take you on the journey. How you going there, Miss Valentine? You had your breakfast? You ate all your breakfast. Good girl. How about you, my sweet girl? Hey, baby. Are you having a wee-wee? You're looking straight at me. That's, that's a bit weird. Hey, girlfriend. You haven't eaten all your breakfast and your treats that Gracie gave you. Yeah, but yeah. I will. Ooh, you know what? I think her mama will eat them when we open the thing up. You, hey, the head bale's already open. You're just sitting there eating your carrots that Gracie gave you. Oh, girly. Uh, yep. You can let Clemmy off, but not Valentine. Let her stay a bit longer. Is that a good carrot? How are you going to snap that one? Oops, dropped it. Get another one. We need to bring a knife out next time and cut them up to bits for her. Oh, that, that makes her. Ooh, where did you go? Put it right at the back. <laughs> you hey. say yummy. Crazy. I gave you a long one. Look, Mom, she's trying to eat. Hey, pretty girl. Hey, pretty thank you for the milk and thank you for being so well behaved. <laughs> I really enjoy it. Mom, and Mom. there's your treat. Mom, she was like. She wiggled her ears. Like... Little Clementine. Yeah, so that was pretty easy actually and to be honest, I'm I'm happy about the fact that I don't have to wash the milking machine when I get in. All I've got to do is clean out the washing bucket, pour off the milk and obviously wash the bucket I milked into but that was pretty good, pretty easy. We can handle no power, can't we girlfriend? Yeah. We can. Let's get cracking, eh? Yeah. We've got a big day today. It's lovely. It's starting Ooh. to come out nice. The boys have gone off on a adventure. on a fishing adventure down in Harvey. So there will be probably a video released in the next couple of days from Brocky. Uh, he's very excited. They're doing a little bit of a challenge, but I'm not going to tell you about it because it's his channel and he can do that for you.
We pulled over from uh, on our way home from a football where Jackson absolutely dominated and his team won so that was awesome and we just were looking at this beautiful view I'm going to show you guys look at that spectacular view and I wanted to take a lovely photo so I was like I'll just pull over here this is the best photo with all the lovely mist sitting on that gorgeous mountain and we looked in front of the car and as fate would have it this poor little darling bird is not looking too good. He's a bit sick. He's sitting out there all by himself on the side of the road. He's still alive. So we've got him wrapped up warm. Yes. And we're going to keep him very quiet. So we've rescued loads of birds before. My kids know not to put your fingers near wild mm -hmm. birds. Uh, but. We don't know if it's been hit by a car. We don't know if it's got a disease. We don't know what's actually wrong with this little bird at the moment. It is a Saturday morning, so nothing's open to take him anywhere. So the best thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take him home, put him inside a little pet carrier on some warm bedding in the quiet, uh, where he can have water and food at his discretion and just hope he feels better. Uh, if he's been hit by a car, he might pass away and that's just, a risk we're going to take but at least he passes away in warmth um, surrounded by love yeah. and being cared for and you know he might be able to have some food if he feels up to it or a little drink of water and you know what he, he might be just in shock as well so he might come good uh, he is a looks like a crossbreed let, let go he's, yeah he's stressed that's what that is so he looks like a corella but he's also got pink on him uh, he's kind of small so he might even be a juvenile um, we've rescued loads of these before quite often they die especially if they've been hit by a car and the wing has been broken but we're gonna give this little guy the best chance we can so we thought we'd share this with you guys uh, the best thing to do if you do come across an injured bird in it's not able to fly and it's definitely injured is if you want to rescue it to go up very carefully, temple. very, very carefully, Grab and very temple. quietly, because they're quite often in shock. Get the thickest thing you've got, it might be a towel in the car, a jumper, a jacket, anything like that. Gently place it over the top of the animal and just wrap it up gently. Chances are good that if it's been hit by something, it's got pain somewhere, so we want to be super gentle. Okay, would you and like then, to use my jumper? It's nice and warm. Oh, as, okay as it's a wild animal it's probably not used to being around people so we we want to sit down very quietly and be very calm around it and the reason we've got the little hood up over his eyes is so he can hide and not feel scared um yeah so we'll keep you up to date with the little the, the goings on with this little bird we'll set him up and um wish us luck i hope he survives hey everyone so we got home uh, we kept the bird quiet all the way home and he was quiet all the way home but still very active. Uh, we, Gracie went to the effort of setting up a little cage with some bird seed and water and then he made some interesting sounds and has passed away. So the kids are 
friends called him Gary. Rest in peace, Gary. Uh, I can't see any obvious injuries on the body, so I'm guessing got hit by a car, uh, which is really sad. So we're going to go have a burial for little Gary, aren't we? We're going to pop his little body in the bottom of one of our garden beds we haven't filled up yet. And then we can return him to the earth and he can help my plants grow. Circle of life. Unfortunate, but sometimes that happens. Ah. <sighs> Tell, me, tell us if that's ever happened to you. Put some comments below and let us know about your success story or your failure with rescuing animals. Um, we've had it go both ways, so this is just a sad, sad case of what happens sometimes. Not a happy ending this time. I'm going to go and do a burial. Yeah, he, he has no injuries that we can see. There's some blackness on his face. Where, love? Yeah, he probably got hit by a car, sweetheart. That's his foot. Um, so we're going to take him up and do a little burial. But we thought it was pretty sad and a bit macabre, but we thought we need to keep you guys updated. We started this story. we got to finish this story. So, unfortunate. We're going to go bury him in the garden now and get on with our day. We've got no power, so it's going to be a big one. Garden beds are looking all good, nice and wet. We've got scraps in the bottom of this one ready to start filling. So they're onion scraps from doing yesterday's onion relish. And Grace is just coming down now with Gary. Grace is a very sensitive little soul. This one, darling. And we always have to nurture that. She's got a kindness. Get a shovel and put some dirt on him. No, just Gary, love. You don't have to. We could do it with the dingo later. But I thought you might want to. Mm -hmm. Oh, some food. Oh, any more. Rest in peace, Gary. Yep, rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these little weird piglies. Oh, it's starting to rain. Oh, yeah, they dig holes everywhere, Mum. Me neither. Sometimes. Hey! <laughs> the yummy piggies! If you've ever wondered where the saying happiest pigs in shit has come from, then you're about to, to realise why. Uh, for some reason, it might be because I love to dig through the cow poo. And it's actually really good for them too. Okay, so the, I don't even know how to put this. I'm exhausted. Um, it appears that the power is going to be out for an indefinite amount of time, nobody knows. Western Power can't help me. That's ridiculous and not good enough to even answer people's questions. And then when they call you, hang up on them. It's pretty poor performance, but anyway, they get away with it. So, I'm, it's about five o'clock. I've had a big day, as you can see, taking kids to footy, rescuing a bird that passed away, dealing with the sadness of my little girl, hand milking a cow. Um, it's been a doozy. Um, but I thought I would finish off this video because I'm about to go up to the shed and grab the generator 
which doesn't have a battery in it because someone took the battery to use in the quad bike and now I've got to try and find diesel and unleaded and I really have nothing to do with those things so what else do I have to do loads of things I have to get another small generator to put at the pump so that we've got water um, from the tanks so this is reality uh, that's why I thought I would hop on and do my outro and say goodbye to you guys for this video but <laughs> lesson learned I need to know a few more things I think I've just got complacent or uh, comfortable in the knowledge that Alex is always there um, to help with these things and if not I had Luke and Bignall and all the different people from from our old property they were always there to help uh, so now I have to do it by myself with two youngest kids so we're going to cook our lovely dinner on the outdoor barbecue. I'll show you this bad boy here, provided the rain doesn't come right down and absolutely smash us. Because it's looking a bit dark here. But this awesome thing here, like the fire in there and you swing your plate around the top, it is mad. I love it. Um, it's something Alex and Brock created together. and. Uh, and you can see our salamis hanging behind us. They're changing colour. They're getting all that, that beautiful little sweat stuff on the outside, which creates the, the good bacteria and stuff to start curing them. Pretty exciting. But this whole setting up the generators so that I can run all my fridges and freezers and not lose thousands and thousands of dollars worth of meat, I'm not going to lie, it's causing me a bit of a headache. Um, so I better get to it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for all your support. We totally adore you guys and we love all your comments. Um, we hope you're enjoying our videos. Uh, we'll have to see you on the next video. Wish me luck, guys. <laughs> you have a lovely night. Bye for now. You've got to see the positives and everything, right? So we now have no light, obviously. Uh, we've managed to get the water going because we've got a... Um, pump that's working and because we got our generator onto the pump so the kids are having a bath and I just wanted to show you guys do you remember how you stick a candle to a plate my kids are like there's no there's no light we can't see anything when I bump into things they're getting all like alarmist you know like and I don't blame them like look at the world we live in but I was like calm down it's exciting it's different it's different to something that we've you know we always do so it's like an adventure until we're camping anyway and i pulled the candles out and we always have candles in our house and when we moved here i remember going why do i even have these we never use candles it's like nah leave them bottom drawer it's one of those bottom drawer things but you never know when you're gonna need them right so i pulled the candles out and I used the wax here. They're like, do I have to carry these everywhere? And I was like, no, dude, check out this really cool trick. And I melted some wax on a plate. You know the one. We all know the one. Melted some wax on the plate, put the candle on, stood it up, and waited for it to dry. And they were like, oh, my God, that's amazing. They were like so spinning out. And you can hear them giggling in the bath now because it's a bit of an adventure. So... I'm actually going to take this day as a blessing because we are always, always trying to go off grid. Like we are in the process of going off grid. So these sorts of things are going to happen. And it's a beautiful blessing and reminder of, you know, we can do this. Just take some out of the box thinking because we're all used to our plug and play lives. So tonight we're going to have dinner around our campfire. And we're going to cook it ourselves around our campfire. And we're going to talk and communicate and look each other in the eyes. And that, my friends, is a super blessing. So I thought I would add this on the end of the video because I just couldn't not. It was a really great, great reminder to just be grateful for what you've got. And I still am super grateful for what I've got. Anyway, I hope you guys have got power. If you don't, have some fun with your kids. You will not regret that. Thank you.